So why on earth did we buy real estate in Sedona when there's hundreds of places we're looking at in the United States and we're buying for short-term rental and the prices per square foot were high? Well, you might think absolute madness. Was it a good decision? Well, you're going to find out. There is a reason to our madness. There's a reason why we chose Sedona. And on top of that, I'm going to tell you how. And this is a crazy story that might be living thousands of miles away. And despite the house having, the house having offers on the house, I was able to get the house and not overbid on it. And this is a true story. I'm going to share that. So lots and lots to unpack in this video. So if you're ready, here we go. We are on a journey to find real estate deals in places of utmost beauty. Entry priced luxury properties that are undervalued or deliver high short term rental revenue what we call Blue Vista properties. All right, well, let's start with why Sedona and uh, a little bit about us and why we invest in real estate. So first of all, I mean, all you have to do is look around me, like look at this. And uh, for those of you who don't know us, well, what we do is we look at real estate in beautiful places around the world. We want to find stunning locations where there is upside potential. So you can invest in real estate and you can get um, rental revenue on short term rental or you can actually make money over time through capital appreciation. Right. And we're looking for beautiful places like we don't want to go to somewhere just because the money makes sense. We want to go to somewhere where when we come and we invest there, we go. Wow. And for me, Sedona and the Red Rock Canyons, I mean, just the amount of things you can do here, you know, the hiking. I love to hike. Came up this morning super early here to watch the sunrise. Paw, I just feel just lots of blue skies, tourism year round. So there's tons of fundamentals that make sense. So we're looking at different places and the journey that started was I was trying to find locations. This was 2017 where the prices, when you go back in time, had not bounced back to just before the crash, the real estate crash in the United States, 2008, 2009, right? I was trying to find where it had gone up to, let's say a certain amount and then dropped, then bounced back up. It wasn't there. And I was comparing to tons of locations. I was comparing to the Carolinas, to Hilton Head, found some crazy houses. I was looking to the Florida Keys, looking on Oregon, Ben, Oregon. I was trying to do look at the comps, price per square foot. And yes, price per square foot here was pretty high. But I came out, met with some realtors and I saw the potential and I realized, you know what? There's so much more upside. Why? And this is what I always say in the channel, beautiful places beautiful, unique places will always attract people. People, human beings love to live in places that are just, excuse my English, kick ass. Like they want to come to places like this. And I just got a sense coming out here. Now I growing up, you know, my father used to go hiking in the canyons. I love the Red Rock. There's something about me, you know, about canyons and just, and I love photography. I love being in nature. So it ticks a lot of boxes, but it's not just about me. If I want to make it a good real estate investment, I want to make sure that I like coming, but I want to make sure that tourists and renters and people are going to want to come and there's going to be a constant flow year round. Now, right now it's, you know, in the middle of winter and look at this beautiful blue skies. One thing it's nice now it gets colder, you know, so it's not the high season, but still year round, we have people coming and booking the house. So without going into all the details, I compared different places and I go and look at a lot of data. And if you're interested, I could do a separate, you know, video on that, but looking at the prices, looking at the rental market, you know, look, comparing the, you know, how, how long is the season? And it, it, here it's not really like there's a season, there's moments, right? Every long holiday, etc. And kind of looking at the occupancy rates, looking at different tools online to compare and then trying to get a sense. So I came out a few times uh, into Sedona and there was a few things that I really liked. And the first one is that a lot of the houses are within HOAs, right? They have a homeowners association and a lot of them have limits. They have a minimum one month. And I was thinking to myself, ha ha, minimum one month. I'm into the short term rental. So I s said, if all those houses cannot do short term rental, they're not competition with me. Right. And as I looked at the market, looked at the segment, I want to have a, my experience has been, and this is what we specialize in. We have a place in Switzerland. If you haven't seen it, um, some videos about that beautiful Chalet and Grindelwald crazy, but going for something larger. So I don't have hundreds and hundreds of properties to compete with. So, you know, looking like eight to 10 people. That's what I looked at. I want something unique. I don't want a house that just looks like everybody else. And in America, sometimes there's a lot of these houses, they all look the same and it has to stand out. Like when you see it, you have to say, oh, wow, that's different. Right. And so you'll see, I'm going to show you 
I mean, here's a preview of the house. I mean, stone inside, brick, completely different than most houses you see here. So, you know, I wanted something you need. I want to make sure the uh, rental market wasn't saturated. Now, you know, if you hit, wait, wait until I get there because things in America have changed since COVID. There's been massive shift with money pouring in and, you know, companies, private equity banks going and buying uh, properties for, for rent, right? That became a huge business. And therefore, suddenly a lot of competition came in. But at the time, listen, there was not that much competition. It made a lot of sense financially. Uh, and I was believing, I was looking at prices. So uh, the range I had to invest in was like five hundred dollars to $800,000. I had the 20% to put down. My financials looked good. And I started looking, right? I started saying, so I'm not going to run into all the reasons, but the prices were high. But I knew, I've seen, it's so funny because you have to understand and look at the big picture when you look at real estate and look at the long term. And I had followed markets, desirable markets, mostly in ski towns like Verbia, Aspen, Vale, but also like places in south of France, uh, you know, looked at holiday places like Costa Rica. Um, and I've done investments in different parts of the world. And... I just saw at the time, I said, I need to compare this to other highly desirable locations. And also one of the key things for me is if you want to do Airbnb, people need to be able to come. You don't want to have only people come for a week. If people are coming for a weekend, it's two hours from Phoenix airport, two hours drive. That's amazing. So people can come for a weekend or a long weekend, fly in, rent a car, come. We're two hours from the Grand Canyon. So it's a huge destination. And a lot of people might do Phoenix, Sedona, stop over, then over, up towards the Grand Canyon. So again, that's a super attractive piece. So anyways, comparing all these different locations, decided, you know what, we're gonna focus on Sedona. And then you really need to get to know the market. So a lot of time looking at properties and I was hesitating, do I buy land and build? And you've seen my other videos about projects in Montenegro, projects in Sardinia. We kind of look at either buy and rent directly, but there you get a loan from the bank. So you use what we call OT OPM, other people's money, the bank's money, and you get you get leverage to that money or you buy and build. And I looked at some amazing land. Actually, I'm super happy. I did not build land and I might do another video about our experience between building and buying. And the most number one reason like sometimes you want to build is because you can design what you want, right? But the downside is the complexity of building, the cash, etc. So in fact, because I was in the US, I could get a loan best decision ever because I could get a lot more for my money and probably if I'd had to finance everything myself, it would have taken for a very long time. So decided to come to Sedona, check out what's on the market, get a scent, meet with tons of realtors, see tons of properties, and then you really start getting a sense. And I always say, if you're going to invest in a new location, you got to go on site. I did one trip, I did a second trip, I went hiking, I explored, and there's a component and a concept I spoke about in other videos, and if you're new, it might be new for you, it's the concept of uh, memory dividends. And I did a video about it, um, but I invest not just for money. I invest for experiences. I invest for passion, for love, for money in a bank account that brings a great return is great. I feel proud, I feel happy I'm getting a return. Money in a property that I can go and visit and use and build memories with my family, hiking, etc. I'm getting another return. I'm getting the financial return, but I'm building. What is life at the end of the day? What is life about? It's the experiences that you live. So is it an experience to be gaining a lot of money in an index fund? It's great. It's great because then you can use that money to do something. But maybe you wait 20 years with that money appreciating. And the meanwhile, I'm coming and using these properties and traveling and getting all these amazing experiences and memories that I'm building. So that's key. And so I'm, I'm not going to go just on the comps and the numbers. I'm going to pick a place where I walk into the house and I'm like, wow, this feels awesome. I love this place. I need to connect and vibrate. By the way, that's also very good because that means the day you sell it, there's something unique about the place, unique about the house. I walked into houses that, you know, financially on paper, they look good. That's a nice house. It's nice inside, but looks kind of like every other house. And Ah, it didn't really have that wow effect. It didn't really have that just breakthrough and, and connect to the heart. So anyways, you know, I'm passionate about this. I'm passionate about real estate. Uh, and I need those two things. I need the financial component, but also the heart component, the passion component. I mean, because at the end of the day, what's life about? Life is about living and enjoying. And I love the process. I love going and finding and discovering and finding a gem. And then, so anyways, I told you I was going to tell you about the crazy story about getting a house. So I'm going on the market and I'm going to start walking here along the path. I come to the market. I see, I get a sense. And, um, but I don't find what I want. I'm um, basically... Uh, 
watching the market. I live in Miami. I've decided, you know what, if I get the right deal in Sedona, I was still looking at some other places, you know, in the United States, but Sedona was kind of the one I said, you're like, this, this looks like really the place. And um, so I have these alerts, right? Uh, I get notifications when properties that match my criteria within a budget, the size that I want, come on the market. And the most important for me was no HOA, okay? I wanted to make sure I could do short-term rental. And so this crazy property pops up on the market. It comes in, it's a Tuesday, uh, I'm in Miami, I see the property, I look at the photos, I look at the price, and I'm like, this is it. This is the property, uh, it's meant to be. <laughs> you got those you know, the moments, I see the light, I see the, and I'm like, and so I reach out to the realtor, and the realtor says, answers, uh, well, you know what, you're in Miami, we put it on the market, and immediately we got three offers, we have one offer above asking price. I can't tell you how much. Uh, so it's kind of useless. We're not gonna hold a property for someone who lives in Miami, lives abroad, uh, I mean, lives away, has to fly in. We have, we, this property is gonna move, the seller's gonna sell it to, we already have three offers. And I tell the realtor, I say, look, I've been looking for a year. I know what I want. This is what I want. I, I, I don't need to come and validate and see it and then say, I'm willing to make an offer sight unseen on this house to get a chance. He says, we don't do that you, it, it, because then if you come, there's an issue, so no. And I say, well, I'll get on a plane today. I'll cancel all my meetings. I'll fly out. I'll be there tomorrow morning, first thing to see the house, come to the real estate office and, and make my offer. But, and he says, you know what? We, we have already these three offers and someone bidding above, it just doesn't make sense. And I say, okay. Let me ask you something. Can I write to the owner? And he says, why would you want to do that? I say, because I want to tell the owner's story. I want to tell the owner why I believe in my heart that this is the house I'm looking for. And um, the realtor says, and sorry, I got a helicopter. A lot of people do tours in the canyons, so much to do. I mean, you can go helicopter rides, uh, airplane, quads, hiking, mountain biking. All right, I was just by some time as the helicopter goes by. And so I, um, he says, okay, you can write to the owner. And I write to the owner and I tell the owner the story. I tell him my story. And it's not a story about, I just want to make money. It goes deeper. It's authentic. It's true. I went hiking since I was a child in the canyons with my father who now passed away. I have read books. I've, I've always been fascinated. I've done photography. I was in the slot canyons of Arizona, uh, you know, Antelope Canyon is all that. I had the books. I went hiking alone when there was nobody. I was in Antelope Canyon being the only person in there. Was it 30 years ago? Even before that, I was super young. I went camping and I just, I love the red rocks and I always wanted to. And the way I look at it is this is a place I want to spend time. Right now I'm working, I was working in Miami, so I, I'll use it. But then later I'll be able to go and, and, and retire and spend time there, right? And so I told the story how um, the canyons had an importance for me. Places like Arizona where I used to travel to so much in my youth, reminding me of my father. Um, and you know, he wrote, he was a, a anthropologist, sociologist, and, 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 and you know, wrote books about you know, the different Indian tribes. And so there's just so much connection there. But just a, a, another one was, I said, I understand how a house is something personal. And when you sell your house, you don't just want it to be to some, sorry, but some idiots or someone who doesn't care or someone's just going in for the money or some bank coming in. And I said, I've been looking at the market for one year one year and I fell in love with your house I fell in love with it I feel it I there's something inside of me that just tells me this is a house that I, I want to be part of and live in and I want to take over from you and it's beautiful what you've done with it and and yeah I, I, I wrote the letter and um, you know what happened is the realtor calls me and he says Nathan I don't know what you did but the seller said, not a bidding war, not a bidding war. This is interesting. There's three offers, just one on the market. So seller could have gone out there and just said, let's just see who comes for the most. He says, if Nathan comes out tonight, 
That means tomorrow morning he's in the house and is willing to match the top offer that was made, not overbid it, match it and sign then and there in the real estate office, the house is his. And the realtor says, I've never seen this. He says, I've never seen this. And he says, your letter made the difference. And you know what I did? I got on the plane. I landed at 11 o'clock in Phoenix. I got the car, 11.30, drove up, you know, arrived at 1.30 in the morning at the house or even 2 a.m. Oh, sorry, at a hotel. Got up in the morning, met with the realtor, went to the house and walked around. And it was it kind of like I knew. I was like, I know I, this is this is it. I'm making the offer, but I walked around and I just wanted to see is there, maybe, you know. So, yeah, also, you always wonder if because sometimes photos. But I've seen so much. I've done so much real estate. When I see photos and I see enough photos, I really get a sense. And that was it. We went to the office. I signed the papers. I had already at the time pre-prepared some pre-authorization with the bank, so I knew I was fine. And that's how I ended up by being in Miami, getting the house of my dreams. Well, probably the seller could have gotten a bit more money with pushing it out and he said i want you to have the house and yeah i'm just so that's it's it's not a trick it's not a hack it also tells you we're human beings and if you're passionate about something if you believe in something with your heart if you're uh i don't know it's strange it's like I just knew deep inside it felt right. And therefore, I ended up with this incredible, credible house. And it's so unique and so particular and so different. And uh, yeah, there's an energy. And I don't know if any of you have ever come out to Sedona, but there's six or seven vortexes, spiritual areas you can go. There's an energy to this place. And that's why there's so many you know, spiritual uh, people who come out here and uh, there's something about Sedona which will always attract in the downtown. It's just so nice, the restaurants, etc. So this is the crazy story how I decided despite all the other places and despite looking at some of the comps uh, to invest here. And in fact, we've done fantastically well financially. Now, I did say earlier, and I got to close this loop about what happened post-COVID, right? And um, or during COVID. So during COVID, there was an explosion. People could not travel. So there was an explosion investments. Is the word explosion the right word? I don't know. Anyways, a lot of people went and didn't travel to France, Italy, to wherever they go. Americans said, we're going to travel in the U.S. And my gosh, the, we were just slammed. The, 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 the market was um, just so many people were coming in. And you know what? There's all these YouTubes and people got interested and, you know, buy to let, buy to, uh, you know, buy to uh, rent, uh, get places to put on Airbnb. And on top of that, by the way, if you don't know, and you put in the comments if you're interested, there's these new mortgages where you can get financing, not based on your income, not based on your financials, but based on the rental return potential of the property. That's how some people who don't have big WTs and tons of cash can go and buy properties. And I didn't know of that at the time. Man, if I'd known, if I'd known this a couple years ago, I oof, I saw other properties a year later, two years later, and it just didn't work financially with my W2 and my income and I had too much debt. I would have gone to one, two or three properties and by, by now, woof, we look at my, you know, value of the house has, has doubled or nerdy doubled. Uh, it was crazy. But uh, anyway, so all these people, started investing in real estate coming in and uh the market was on fire and then what happened well i mean again i'm sorry just i gotta pause <laughs> and those of you who watch my videos i get so, so enthusiastic about beautiful places like uh uh look at this i love this took some photos this morning of this tree there with the sun rising it's just crazy so um so post covid what's happening well Americans start traveling to other parts of around the world, right? They're going out to, uh, to Europe, etc. Lots of people come in and start buying for rental. So you have demand going down, supply going up. Now, anybody knows economics, what happens? Well, you kind of want the opposite to happen, right? You want a high demand and a low supply, and that's great for prices. So we started seeing impact on our bookings. We started seeing impact on our prices. We had dynamic pricing per night and we had to start lowering the pricing because there's just too much competition and people are out there dating. You know, you'd rather have a night rented out at a low price than get zero dollars. So 
Uh, and I've seen that, and you know, if you you Google online, look on YouTube, there's tons of people saying, is it the end of the Airbnb business? Is it finished? Uh, the bust of the big, there's a lot out there, and it's true, I saw the impact. And I saw also because, you know, these big equity funds are coming in, and they're like investing and buying up houses and houses to put on the market to rent. And so you're competing with a different machine than before it was just a few people. But, so it has impacted, it's true, you see the impact on the yields, the return. I mean, our, our biggest years in terms of the revenue we made, you know, right during and the end of the pandemic versus today, it has dropped. But uh, it doesn't mean it's not interesting. The one thing is, is you, you know, now prices are higher, interest rates are higher. So if you go in, unless you're buying cash, and interesting, some people coming out from California and buying places out cash. I just saw an article about luxury homes out here are go, doing really well. I mean, market has kind of shifted upward and a lot of people are buying cash. But if you're getting a mortgage, buying high interest rates, and the Airbnb market is a bit more tense, you gotta be careful on the numbers. So you always have to do your research. And uh, you know, we spend a lot of time kind of looking, looking at the numbers. But uh, there is some good signs is, I do think, like I've always said, in general, the potential beautiful places, unless there's a real mega economic crisis, so it will continue to be desirable. Um, interest rates in the United States are, or at least directionally, the belief is they're going to be going down. So we did see pressure on the prices from the highest that the prices were about two and a half, three years ago that has dropped somewhat. So it also makes it a bit more interesting. I think you're going to start seeing some movement on the market. So I hope this was useful, interesting. I love to tell my stories. I love to share my passion about real estate. I love to share my passion about beautiful places. And I have these videos where I go to different parts of the world where I've invested or I'm looking at investing and share my experience, share my stories, and also kind of share about the places and what you get for the money, what you, what you have and why I love these places. So if you like the content, just send me a sign. It's important. It tells me, hey, keep doing what you're doing. So, you know, if you click the like, subscribe to the channel, put some questions in the comment chat box and well, I'll be seeing you in a future video. Thanks for watching.